Hey there, folks. So I've got a little bit of a weird one today, um, and to be honest, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty quick because we're not gonna be doing a full install. The actual kit itself is gonna work the exact same as the previous version. Uh, the only difference is going to be the screen, so that's all we're going to be taking a look at. In fact, I'm not even gonna be looking at the kit that the screen is supposed to come with. I'm looking at a different kit because that's what I had on my desk and that's what I had that was convenient to work with. So last time you guys saw this Game Boy Color, I was installing one of the laminated Funny Playing IPS kits in it. Uh, and last we left off, I believe I, I used this particular screen. Now this screen did have a little, a few little issues, um, but this was also out of my DOA pile. Um, so it was kind of to be expected to have issues, but I never actually, uh, adhered it in there. So I just popped it out there and popped the new one in. So what this is, um, it's the new laminated screen kit from, uh, one chip. So for those that aren't in the, uh, in the know, uh, as of right now, January, 2022, there are three major players in the, uh, backlight game for Game Boys. Um, there are a few other little ones here and there, but the, the, the popular kits seem to come from one of three kit makers. Um, one of them is going to be Cloud Game Store. They make, um, they had their own custom LCDs spun up. Uh, the size of the image is about the same as the uh, Q5 LCDs that these kits have been using, but the LCD itself is a little bit smaller because there's less dead space around the image. Uh, it is a custom LCD, kinda. Uh, semi-custom semi LCD. Uh, unfortunately, it makes the LCD itself a little bit more expensive, but the conversion electronics behind it are a little bit cheaper and a little bit more power efficient than the other two main competitors. The second big player is going to be Funny Playing, and they did the laminated kit that we saw uh, in my last video with this Game Boy Color. It'll be linked down in the description. Um, they made the, uh, the kit for this Game Boy. They made the shell. They made the uh, LED kit in there. Uh, they made all sorts of good stuff. Uh, but the third major player, um, you've heard me refer to them before as one chip, and I refer to them as one chip because they don't like to put their name on things for whatever reason. They don't really use any branding. I haven't quite figured out why. Um, maybe it's because they tend to copy other kits. And well, it looks like that's what they did here. So again, this is the funny playing LCD. The uh, screen is laminated to the lens. It's one of the best end results that I've seen in um, in backlight kits for the Game Boy Color. Uh, if you're doing a backlight kit, I have always, 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 always highly recommended the funny playing LCDs. Now. I've seen some sentiments going around uh, that these LCDs are basically defective, and they're not. Like, I mean, I, I know I'm not making a good case with my last video how many defective LCDs I went through, but I was also literally pulling them out of my DOA pile, and I got my DOA pile from a vendor that sells these. These are returns. These aren't stuff that I ordered. I have only in my history ever gotten one DOA, and that also happened to be the one in that video. Um, Either way, you get a defect, you talk, you test it before installing it, you talk to whomever you bought it from, you get taken care of. Once installed, the kits look fantastic. But that's not really the point of this video. The point of this video is the uh, is the new kit that we're taking a look at from One Chip. Now, this one's already set up and plugged in and we will take a look at that in a second, but let me first take a look at the sample that they sent. And I don't know, this, this is how they sent it. It's a little bit weird. Um, they sent buttons, a shell with no battery cover, and then two screens. There's no kit or anything to hook these up. Uh, so I assume the kit itself, the conversion electronics are gonna be the exact same as the previous kit, which is why I'm not going to go in depth testing that in this video because I did it in my last video. I'm just gonna be walking through the same steps again. Uh, it's the exact same LCD, exact same conversion electronics, so it'll perform the exact same. What's different is how you install the LCD. So let me go ahead and pop this off. 
and we'll take a look at the back of this. Now, this is going to look pretty standard as far as these Q5 kits go, but what you may not have noticed is that this is a standard, uh, like, generic aftermarket shell. There is absolutely nothing special about this shell, and we can even pop the LCD out and take a look at it. The only thing special about this shell is that someone came in here with a CNC router and enlarged the window. So on the outside, they cut it out, and there's very little lip on the top, uh, quite a bit more on the bottom left and right. But it's different from the funny playing one, because if, uh, if we pop this out and try not to spoil things too much, you see how the uh, funny playing shell is laid out. The top left and right ridges are about the same, but the bottom kind of hooks under. So instead of using their own custom shells and having those made, they opted to just use this as a solution. So what they've done here is they essentially laminated the LCD to a piece of one millimeter. Th no, that's even thicker than one millimeter. It looks like one and a quarter or one and a half millimeter. Um, they laminated the LCD to a piece of glass and then laminated that glass to the lens. So there are two layers of glass. It is fully laminated, but it's, it's very thick. Uh, I don't know uh, longevity wise how these are going to hold up. I don't know if they're going to be a little bit more durable than the funny playing ones or a little bit less durable. I don't know. Uh, but the biggest difference, like off the bat, these are both white. Let's, um, let's actually peel this off so we can get a better look at that, huh? I'll peel this one too. Why not? So again, this is the funny playing one. The biggest difference is, of course, that the logo on the funny playing one is uh, transparent. So behind the logo, there's no paint or anything on the lens because the LCD itself illuminates and projects a color through the logo, whereas the one chip version has a full regular logo. Um, so how does the effect work? I mean, let's look at that. But before we look at that, you know, again, I just want to go over the trimming real quick. This isn't something that I could do on camera. This is something that I would be doing with a Dremel. Um, and we will probably take a crack at this on camera, see if I can't get it with some hand tools later. But um, that's that'll be to come when I get a uh, full when I get my hands on a full kit. We'll take a better look at that. Um, but this is the trim. All it is, all they did was enlarge the window. There's a little bit of trimming on the inside, but I think this was just um, like I don't I don't think this was intentional. This was I said it was a CNC router, but I think this might have been done by hand uh, on an XY table uh, because they took quite a bit big chunk out of here, but they left it up here. So if we look at this, it's kind of hard to tell depth because if you're watching this through a video not actually here with me, you have no depth of perception. Um, but if we take a look at this, you can see right here, this area of raised plastic is completely unmodified. They didn't cut this up at all. So that's how the shell is normally. And then there's this big chasm down here that they did cut. So I think this cut right here is, I think it serves no purpose other than they just had it in the jig and accidentally cut it. Um, but once that whole window is cleared out, you slip this in from the front, just got to get the ribbon cable through, give it a slight bend, twist the LCD so that it is straight and lined up, and then just insert it. You want to insert it as flat as possible. You do not want to like come in at some sort of weird angle because if you do that, you will leverage the shell between the uh, screen and the lens, and you could damage the LCD. Because there's quite a bit of uh, quite a big gap. So as flat as possible, line it up like that. I'll slide it in, and that's it. Now, for the demonstration purposes, I do have it in a funny playing shell, but because of how thick it is, it doesn't actually sit flush. Now, you could probably get this to sit flush if you trim out this shelf back here, and we will probably try that at a, uh, at a future time. 
um, but in the meantime it does fit in a funny playing shell and with a funny playing LCD kit because you can always reposition the image on screen. Power that up and take a look here. I'm going to kill the lights and uh, bring that in a little bit and get a better look. The LCD itself, it's the same Q5 that we know and love. The quality is quality is fantastic. I've always been very pleased with them. And of course, this is a funny playing kit powering this, not the one chip kit, but the end result should be more or less the same thing. Uh, now, you probably can't see it because it's completely opaque, uh, but the uh, lens, the logo behind here is tr illuminated because, like I said, this is a funny playing kit. Um, but you can't see it because this isn't that screen. Um, so it is laminated. It does look fantastic. As in, like, you're, you're not ever going to have any dust issues with this sort of thing. You're, you're never going to get any dust in there. Uh, but one of the things that I'm noticing is you can see exactly where the uh, lamination starts and ends because the white print on this lens isn't the thickest. Um, hopefully the black lenses will be a little bit better. This is a funny playing one, but just, just so you get the idea of what I'm talking about, uh, the black should be a little bit harder to see the uh, edges on. But white's what I got. Uh, now, it is laminated, so from a lot of angles, it does look like the screen is right up against the glass. And that does provide that same pleasing effect that we know from the funny playing LCDs. But it is also still gapped behind, like it's, it's still a full two and a half millimeters from this surface of the glass. So you do still see a little bit of a weird gap. Uh, granted, it's nowhere near as bad as some of the um, older kits. Uh, for example, the non-laminated versions of these Q5 kits. Um, but it, it's it's a step up, I would definitely say. I I think it is I think it is the way to go if you want one of the uh, OSD kits for a Game Boy Color. Um, now again, you'll have to check out my old video if you want to see all the full features of that specific kit and you know the performance. Um, we're just looking at the LCD here, and yeah, I mean it's fine. Still. So, I would prefer this one. If I was going for a laminated screen, I'd go for the Funny Plane. I think the glowing logo is an excellent, excellent addition. Um, and like I've like I've said quite a few times at this point, the uh, the LCD closeness to the front of the glass does look better than what we've got here. Uh, the downside, of course, is there's no such thing as a drop-in shell for this kit. I don't, I don't know if that's intended to change. I don't know if they're working on one. All I know is right now, they cut the sample for me because, um, well, not not for me specifically. Uh, this was a sample they actually sent to Retro Game Repair Shop, who sent it my way because um, he values my opinion on these sort of things, and I and I respect that, so I try and give his best and unbiased opinion that I can. Um, I dig it. I do like it. It works. It's good. But this is better. Sorry, but it it, it is. Um, if for some reason you want to install this in a shell that Funny Playing doesn't offer, I mean, I guess this is a much easier trim than trying to fit one of the Funny Playing screens. But if you want to do a shell that Funny Playing does offer, Funny playing is the easier way to go because you don't have to do any trimming. You just drop it into the shell and bobs you onto. Pop that out and yeah, that is the uh, that is the new screen. Just just for verification in case someone thinks I'm making stuff up, which I try not to do. And then yeah, there's the funny playing kit powering it. But I don't know. It's it's all right. I don't hate it. I think it was a weird decision 
Based on how this sits at the bottom, I'm confident that just cutting out that shelf at the top would allow this to sit all the way back, but with that shelf there, we can't do that. And I don't want to cut it out because, like I mentioned in that other video, we've, I've got plans for this shelf, and I haven't, haven't started on that project yet, so we'll have to be, I'll have to grab another one. Maybe we'll cut up this one, I'll just grab another one and use that. But, um, yeah, there you go. Let me know what you guys think. I think it's, I think it's an interesting direction, and I do think it works, but again, I still think the funny playing method is better. So, anyway, that's my thoughts. I'll let y'all get back to it. Have a fantastic day. Catch you next time.